All right. So this is a this is the the Cadence uh, software window, the first window that you see once you have logged in. I'll go into the lab lecture. So this is the lab lecture. I've chosen this circuit again, very simple resistive network. So th there was a reason that I chose this circuit is because of uh, it has both the voltage sources and the current sources. So there will be a variety on how many different uh, sources we can use within the same system. Secondly, there is one one thing which normally sets uh, error within uh, within cadence. So where, whenever there is there is a four-way junction, you know, for example, when we'll be connecting this circuit, this resistor wire has to pass to this point and this point. So normally, cadence will give a warning that thinking that maybe you never wanted to connect this resistor here, you wanted to bypass it and just connect it here. So in a four-way junction, this is uh, there's a specific warning. We have to get rid of that warning to make it work. So I chose this circuit specifically. So this is how we'll start uh, in a virtuoso. We'll do with files. So we'll, first of all, we'll go to to the sorry. We'll go to the tools and we'll go to the library manager. This is where we'll head in. So in the within the library manager. We, you guys will see that you all have the test class, all right? So you will have a test class. This is you will you will just highlight the test class. Once that that's done, we'll go to the file, new cell view. Okay. Now we have to name the cell view. Cell view is the place where you make your schematic. So I'll say uh, lab one, circuit one. Okay, and here this it says schematic view. The type is schematic. Open the schematic L. Nothing else will be changing. So say okay. Yeah, this is being recorded. So we we now have uh, this window. This is schematic window where we will be um, we will be making the circuit. Okay. So uh, again, let's go here. Sorry, this is the circuit we're looking at. Okay. So what we have, we have a resistor. There are like four resistors in total, two voltage devices and one uh, voltage sources and one uh, two current sources, all independent uh, sources. So when we when we say about uh, putting a resistor in in cadence, we use a term that is called instantiate. So we instantiate a component or a device or anything. So that's the, the process is called instantiating. And you can go to create and click the instance. So when you click the instance. You go to a, a pop-up window comes and says that you are you have a library. Go to browse. Within the browse, uh, the first of all, because we are looking at the resistance, the resistance are located in the analog library. So in analog library, either you search or you can go to the show categories. Within the show categories, this these are the categories. Okay, let me see. Yeah, and. In within the categories, you go to passive components, and within the passive components, you will find the resistor. Here, here's the resistor. Okay, this is one way. Okay, that that we we can find it through the categories. So if we are not looking at the categories, uh, we can say that we can just come here and actually just. Uh, write the name of the cell and actually it will pop up. So this is a resistor. All right. Once it is done, you can close this window. You can hide this one and put your resistor. So where is my resistor actually? Where does it go? So we have three resistors here. Okay. So I'll put one resistor here and the second one, second resistor here. And to to rotate it, I just click R. So clicking R will rotate the resistor. All right. 
So third register is here. And once you're done, sorry, once you're done with it, you, all you have to click is the escape key. So you click the escape key and this uh, resistor continuity goes away. There are several other ways to take the resistor instead of instantiating it from the beginning. Uh, for example, copying. For copying, you click the C key anywhere. So you click the C key, C key and you see the cursor has a plus uh, addition sign on it. Once it means that it is ready to copy. And what, what is it that you would like to copy? So I'd like to copy, wait, what was the, sorry, what was the fourth resistor over here? So I'll copy that resistor. So I'll just click this resistor and it has a, it already has a copy. Okay, so we already have a copy which will go somewhere here. Okay, and once it is done, I'll hit the escape key. Okay, so four resistors are now defined. Now we're looking at uh, voltage sources. One voltage source uh, is again minus plus here, uh, is horizontal, the other one is vertical. So for the voltage source, again, instead of uh, clicking the create you can just hit the I key and it will, it will go to the instantiate In the instantiate you can go to the browse within analog library the or if you go to the show categories so in the categories uh, we have the sources here are the sources within the sources we are looking at the independent sources okay we have to get rid of this okay so in the, within the independent sources we are looking at uh, VDC which is here so that's that's our independent direct current source we'll click the direct current source we close it hide this one and then we bring it here in parallel to this resistor okay and the other one is okay rotate 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 because minus here plus there and this is this will be at the junction of this one. So I will just put it over here. So that's my voltage source. Again, uh, now we would like to have two current sources, current source one and the second one. So I'll hit the I key to instantiate, go to the library. And then all I have to do is to look for IDC, which is a current source, direct current, current source. This one is here, it's here. You just close it, hide this one. And the current sources are, so rotate, rotate. And the current source is in parallel to this one. And the other one is in parallel, so rotate, rotate, rotate. Yeah, it's parallel to this one. Once it is done, hit the escape key. Okay. So we have uh, placed all of the components. Now we would like to wire the circuits. So for the wiring, you just again use the shortcut key W. W is for the wire and your system is ready to connect the circuit. So I'll click here, click this point, and then click this point and this one here. And then this source is connected to this source, which is then connected to this resistor. And this resistor is connected to this source. And then, okay, this one. And then, what else look at this resistor is not connected to this one and this is connected here okay i think the circuit is not complete all right uh now we go to instantiate again because i forgot to put the ground go to the browse and within the browse now i'll leave the categories window i'll just uh, type in gnd for the ground, okay. 
close and just put the ground over here. So once it is done, uh, sorry, to, to delete, a, delete a component like I have an extra, so you just hit the delete key and then click the component that you would like to delete. Once it is deleted, click this check and save. This check and save will pop up if there are, there are any errors or warnings within your circuit connection. So I did that and the system is telling me that there are four warnings. Okay, first of all, it says that this is not connected here. Okay, let me just, uh, let me delete this wire and bring a new wire okay, here. Uh, okay, once this is done, now check and save. Two warnings are left. Okay, let's see what are the warnings. So first warning is here. The same thing that I was talking about. So if I click this junction, sorry, okay. So if I click this warning, it tells me the warning solder solder dot on cross over. And the second warning is again the same. If I click that thing, say solder dot on cross crossover at a certain point. So so right now the Cadence is actually trying to tell you that maybe you never wanted to connect it here. You wanted to bypass that. So if it is the re if if this is your intention, then actually if uh, if you see that the junction the, uh, this connection is forming a junction here and is also connecting at that point, is that you want or not? So you won't be able to move forward if you keep on saying check and save will keep on giving you warnings. So to get rid of these warnings, all we have to do is to go to check. Within the check, we'll go to the rule setup. In rule setup, go to physical. In physical, this is soldier on crossover. It's a warning. Just ignore it. Ignore and say OK. All right. Now we'll do check and save. And there are no errors. So system has accepted our junctions as the connection points. And actually, if you see that within this we can see that these are the junctions so we want we don't want to bypass these wires we need to actually connect it okay once that is done okay so once that is done uh, i'm just beautifying it Okay, once it is done, now we would like to set the values. Sorry? We just drag it. I just I just took the component, I dragged it and started working. So no key to press. So now we would like to select the values. We would like to configure the parameter values. So I'll go back, I'll see what are the so we have two is it two ohm four eight ten. All right. So I'll click this resistance. Once I've clicked it, I'll hit the Q key, Q quantity. So Q key, queen. And it is now telling me by default, the resistance value is 1K ohm, but we are looking for two ohms. So I'll say two and okay. Now, uh, the value is set to two. Now, actually, whenever I'll select the new, the next components, the kilo ohms, uh, you know, the, the place where the resistor value is will always be highlighted by itself. So we don't have to click it. So for example, I click this one, I hit the Q key, and you see one kilo ohm is highlighted. So I don't have to click here, I'll just press, uh, how, how much was that? Wait. It was four, eight, and 10. So I'll just, uh, Q key, sorry, it's there already. Okay. So I'll just hit the four and okay. And now I'll click this one and Q and eight, okay. And then this one, Q, 10 ohm and okay. All right, now uh, we're looking at the voltage value. So we have five volt and 12 volts, okay. Five and 12 volts. So I'll click this one, Q and the, voltage is 5 volts. So DC voltage is 5, done. This one, Q, 
DC voltages. So, so again, you see, I mean, this area, this uh, tab was highlighted by itself because the system knows that this is where we are focusing on. So for the current, we have half ampere and two ampere. So we have Q, DC current is two ampere, and this one is Q, half an ampere, so which is 0 0.5. Okay, our schematic is done. I'll see with check and save if there are any warnings. So there are no warnings. All the values are set. Once this is done, I'll go to the launch. And within the launch, I'll, sorry. Sorry, I don't know what happened. Okay, I'll go to the launch. Hmm. I don't know. So, sorry. Okay, again, so we'll go to the launch and in launch, I'll go to ADXL. Since we don't have a new uh, existing view, so I'll say I'll go to create a new view. Okay. So now we are creating a simulation environment uh, like we, we used to do in LT Spice. You know, we'll configure the, uh, the window for the simulation purpose. So our schematic is done. Now we're looking at the, uh, at the simulation environment setup, the test circuit setup. So it is telling me that the lab one circuit one is that you would like to launch. I'll say, okay, that's what I want. And then I'll go to the test. So the, we have to create a test. So I'll say, click here, click here. Cl uh, the test class is for the lab one circuit one. Yes, okay. Once that is done, the first thing you'll always have to do is to go to setup. In the setup, you'll go to the environment. In the environment, you'll have to run with 64-bit binary. This is very important that to get the exact values and the very nice and smooth plots. And to run the system with high accuracy, we'll have to choose the run with 64 binary. Please don't forget it. You'll always have to do that. Say, OK. Once that is done, we have three things to set up. So this first window here, I'll click that. Once I click, there are different type of analysis in the system. And right now we are looking for the DC analysis. So I'll click the DC analysis and I'll say that save DC operating point. So this is the DC analysis option. I'll say, okay. Once this is done, this is the only thing that we require. We are not looking at, we are not going to look at the variable editing because we didn't set any variable. So that's okay, nothing here. And this is the setting up outputs. We, we haven't set the output or we are not selecting outputs from the schematic. So we don't care about this one right now. We just do take care of the DC analysis. Once that is done, I'll close this window. Now, within the lab one circuit one, this is our circuit. I forgot to label uh, the things. So I'll just label. For labeling, you just click in L, all right? So label L and I'll say, I'll keep it, say this is V1. So this is the V1 label. And then the label is V2. And this is V2. Okay. So yeah, these two are enough label, labeling. So I'll again go, you click these two arrows to get the check and save. Okay, then again, the next tab is ADEXL. So this is the circuit window, this is the ADEXL. Within ADEXL, we have output setups and the results setup. We have two different uh, things. So we already set the environment within the test. You see in the test environment, we already set what we want to do. We want to do the DC simulation, the DC operating point analysis. Here, analysis is DC operating point. Once that is done, hit the simulation run and you see here it starts populating starts running the simulation okay when this window pop up you know that the simulation is done and it is finished it didn't it didn't uh, came with warning so it is finished that means it was done so right now what i would do i would just right click this one and then go to the annotate and i would like to see the dc node voltages so I'll click DC node voltages and the node voltages have now appeared. 
you can always hit the F key to fit the plot. So we have seven rolls, seven rolls. Uh, so the the node voltage is at both the points of seven volts. So actually, there's no current flowing through that circuit. Seven and five. So the vo node voltages are written here. So in within this example, V1 here was seven and V2 is 12. So let's just check. Yeah, so V1 is actually seven volt and V2 is 12 volts. So which is correct. Now, if I'm, I'm looking not only for the voltages, but the currents and the power, you know, the, all those uh, DC operating values, all I have to do is I right click again, go to annotate and say DC operating points. So it will tell us each and everything. Yeah, here, you see, it is telling me for this one. Uh, yeah, here. The power is 3.125 watt and the current is 625 milliamps and the voltage is 5 volts. So that's how it is. So it has populated all the resistors, all the components uh, that are relevant, I mean, uh, that are present and gave the, the values. For example, this resistor voltage is zero, current is zero, so thus the power is zero. All right. That's how we work with cadence so the the workflow is that we make a make a schematic we label the schematic we label the nodes wherever required and then we set the values of the components then we do check and save once check and save we launch the adx cell in the ad cell uh, we set up a test and the test defines the test, the analysis that we will be choosing. So normally, like we choose the DC analysis here. We choose the DC analysis. And once that analysis is chosen, we run the simulation. And the simulation is run. Uh, when the simulation uh, is done running, we can right click and f look at the values of our own interests. All right. That's the workflow. So once that is done, we are not uh, finished yet. We we still have to we still have to take a high resolution picture, a high resolution. So I'll go here within the lab one to take a high resolution picture for this one. What I'll have to do, I'll go to my Genesis Mobile strip. So this is my Genesis. So I can create a folder. So let's say create new folder. I'm saying advanced circuits uh, picks. Okay. So I have made this folder and it, it has now appeared here. Advanced circuits picks. The folder is here. Now I would like to save my high resolution images within that folder. And you can go to your yeah, your virtuoso. Once you're there, you can start looking to save your picture. So save your. I have totally forgot where will I get that in the options. Okay. In the file. In the file, I'll go. I'll say export image. And visible area yes the visible area scale exported region is this one the i want the appearance in full color the background is not black i'll choose white background or a little grayish that will be done okay and the name of the file uh we can name it later so I'll go to the browse. I'll hit the browse. The type PNG, this is what we'll be looking for. So I'll hit the browse button. And you will see these different folders. Here, normally, you will have your own, uh, your net ID. So you'll click that. Within that, when you click that, you see this advanced. Actually, it was not circuit. I said CCUs to picks. So I'll just click that one. And I'll name the file as um, 
scheme one, okay? So it's scheme one dot PNG will be the file name and I'll say save to file. All right, once I've uh, saved that file, I'll go to mobile extreme again. Within the advanced circuits, scheme one PNG is there. So I'll right click, download, I'll download it over the desktop. Okay, it will show you the progress of downloading. Okay, it's done already. So here's the scheme one. I'll double click. Yep, that's my PNG picture. And it is, it is very high resolution picture. So I chose the gray environment. You can choose different environment. I think white would have worked much better. Okay, so this is my, this is how we take the high resolution image and then export it directly to our desktop within the circuit window. I'll, I'll quickly go to file, I'll export image, the entire design and the background color, I'm gonna choose white now. Okay, so white and I'll name it scheme two. Save to file, go to Mobile extra. So when you when you've already saved and you don't see a file, just hit the refresh key, and it's there now. So I'll download to the desktop. Yes, uh, it's downloading. There is the progress bar. Okay, done. Here's a scheme too. Yeah, that's how it looks like. Okay, so uh, this part is done i mean we have this thing in detail uh, how to set up i'll just uh, stop this part of video this circuit one video and then i'll start saving for the next video uh, when we'll solve the next circuit